I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hello, I am Amy Overton, and I'm very honored to be one of the co-moderators here at First Congregational in DeKalb. On behalf of our congregation, I welcome all of you to this very special service. We are very happy that you have chosen to celebrate the installation of the Reverend Dr. John Dornhauer with us. This is truly an important moment in the life of our church, and it is wonderful to see so many of John's friends and colleagues who have come to be part of this historic and joyous occasion. As we begin, let us thank God for his enduring love and unending grace. We ask that we walk in God's blessing and goodness today and every day. Let us be glad and celebrate this special time together in the house of the Lord. Please join me in a call to worship. With the joy we come before God to recognize and celebrate covenant. With the joy we find in the call by the Holy Spirit to serve and share ministry in the name of Jesus. Under the watchful eye of the Holy Spirit, Pastor John and the first and first congregational have discerned a mutual call. And so we gather to bear witness before God to the promises they made. together this afternoon to celebrate the ministry of this church and their called pastor. You have given each of us life and breath. You present us with opportunities to seek you out. You whisper to us, and when we do not answer, you whisper a little louder. Help us to hear you today and in the years to come that all of us might work for these people here gathered, with these people, and through these people, to bring your ideal world of peace, justice, and love to all. In you, we live and move and have our being. Amen. Amen. Our first song, I forgot my other sheet that has the song number. 11. 11. We're going to sing song number 11 from your black hymnals. Please rise if you're able and are comfortable doing so.
Spirit of the living God fall fresh on this place. Ignite and lead pastor and people in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Let their work and their worship be a direct reflection of your love. A love built on humanity's Imago Day, and not race, gender, sexuality, social economic status, or citizenship. By your spirit, show pastor and people how to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, God. Show them when to lead. Show them when to be a supporting ally. Show them when to move, when to speak, and when to pray. Allow this edifice to be a welcoming refuge for all, a place of peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Allow all polity that are oppressive in nature to be challenged so people can work and worship in liberation. Spirit of the living God, move pastor and people from comfort and complacency to advocacy and allyship that ushers in the kingdom of God here on earth. Lead them to the side of church history that works to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, house the homeless, and visit the incarcerated. Spirit of the living God, let justice roll like a river and righteousness like a never-ending stream. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on people and pastor. We ask this in the mighty, majestic, matchless name of the Palestinian refugee who left Bethlehem for Egypt for a better life, Jesus Christ. If you agree, say amen. Amen. Yes, it is quiet. I'm to tell you, um, Many of you know this already, that no, I'm not Chad Abbott, unfortunately. <laughs> He's a lot taller, I think. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, unfortunately, unfortunately, he's broke down beside his car on a highway somewhere, waiting for somebody to come and get that started again. And so I'm here in his place. And I'm going to give you a, a, a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. From the 31st verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin, no more. Now for a simple song. I got asked to do this and I hadn't really learned the song and now I learned it, I think. We'll find out real quick, won't we? <laughs> I'm singing it more like a lullaby, I guess. Let me be a little kinder, let me be a little blinder to the faults of those about me. Let me praise a little more. Let me be when I am weary, just a little bit more cheery Think a little more of others And a little less of me Let 
let me be a little braver when temptation bids me waver let me strive a little harder to be all that i should be let me be a little meeker for the sibling that is weaker let me think more of my neighbor and a little less of me Let me be when I am weary, just a little bit more cheery. Let me serve a little better those that I am striving for. Let me be a little meeker with a sibling that is weaker. Think a little more of others and a little less of me. Civilization Christ, good afternoon. good afternoon. Let me first express my gratitude for being here with you today and to thank John for the invitation and the privilege to preach and be here with all of you. John and I have a deep and abiding friendship that began long ago when we were serving in conference ministries in Missouri, Mid-South, and Connecticut. Do you remember the moment when you met someone and you knew immediately that you had a deep and abiding connection? I had that connection with John. Over the years, we have rejoiced and supported one another in our joys and in the challenges that we have faced in our respective ministries. We served on the Council of Conference Ministers together, a lively bunch. And most recently, we served in the national setting of the United Church of Christ, where John was my boss. And you can ask him how that went. Now, in spite of John's enthusiasm for the wrong baseball team, which I'm, sh which I'm sure you've heard enough about already, we still remain friends. John preached at my installation as the conference minister of Connecticut, and to this day, that was a highlight of that worship service. But I would be remiss not to mention the star of the Dorhauer family, Mimi. <laughs> Mimi has provided deep and abiding support to John and their family, and she brings a perspective that if you ask her, she will share it with you. I do need to ask if John was being subtle, and all the preachers in the first couple of rows will wonder what I'm going to do next, but were you being subtle about having this here in the pulpit? Siblings, would you join me now in a word of prayer? Eternal God, we gather here today in a spirit of love and welcome and hospitality to share all that we are, to be open to new insights from those great witnesses who have gone before us, on whose shoulders we do stand, and to seek all that speaks truth to our hearts, now through my imperfect words, may you be revealed and bind us together as your covenant people. In Christ's name we do pray, amen. This is obviously a big day in the life of the Reverend Dr. John C. Dorhauer, in the life of First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, DeKalb, and an important moment, and it's so wonderful to see so many representatives for, from the Prairie Association of the Illinois Conference of the United Church of Christ. In many ways, an installation recognizes something that already does exist, 
After all, John's been your pastor for these past three months and a part of your community and the TikTok community, I might add. <laughs> now, before you called John to serve as your pastor, he preached here in this church before you and has now gotten to know you as members of this wonderful congregation. He has jumped into this ministry with both feet and he has told me time and time again how much he loves being your pastor. And so that relationship between pastor and people has already begun. So what are we doing here on a Sunday at 3 p.m., a sunny Sunday, no less, here in Illinois? Now, events like this one are important, and not just for the reception that follows the service. <laughs> Today is an important opportunity to affirm that this relationship between pastor and people is important and is not to be taken for granted. This installation is a moment to remind ourselves that churches, congregations do not exist just for themselves that the First Congregational Church of DeKalb is a part of the wider United Church of Christ, and the installing body is not this church, but it is the association consisting of those surrounding area churches with whom you share an agreement, a covenant, to be in relationship with each other. We are part of that great cloud of witnesses in what we are about to do this afternoon. We are all a part of the body of Christ. We are part of the United Church of Christ whose vision is clearly stated, united in Christ's love, a just world for all. We are inheritors of a legacy and a statement to the world about who we are. And so today is a day of making promises. It is a day of reminding ourselves that we are bound together, freely, one to the other. Now imagine, if you will, the scene from Jeremiah that was just read. The prophet is standing amidst a people marked by brokenness. An agreement and a covenant had been shattered. And hearts were yearning to be restored, to be brought together once again. And amid this deep longing, God speaks through the prophet Jeremiah not merely offering a technical fix, but unveiling a profound and transformative promise, a promise that something new was going to be created between God and the people. Now we have no modern day equivalent for the word troth, T-R-O-T-H, and it's occurs in the Old English wedding service. In fact, the only remnant in our language, I think, is betrothed, and nobody uses that anymore either. But that word troth means a choice from which all other choices flow. Your betrothed is a choice of a person which will affect your decisions and the rest of your life. A church's choice of a pastor is a trough choice. A pastor's choice to serve a congregation is a trough choice. And so we are here today through this service of installation to celebrate and to witness to that choice that you have made to one another. First Congregational DeKalb for John to be your pastor and John your choice to serve in that important capacity. And so today we seal that choice. Now people have had a lot of fun and pastors will know this with the word installation. 
I don't know what you think about when you hear the word installation, but I often think of appliances. <laughs> if we install our pastors, perhaps we see them only as machines who will do the work for us. I've wondered about this on many occasions, and I have discovered a comparison study about how pastors are like appliances. Are you ready? Even if you're not, I'm going to continue. We shop for them so we get the best model for the least amount of money. We have them shipped, in this case from Cleveland, and then we install them. They have to be plugged into a power source. We expect them to just do their work without making a lot of noise. We use them 24-7 with no maintenance or cool down time and then get angry if and when they break down. We want them to look good to stay shiny and bright on the outside so we can invite our friends over to see them. We kick them when they're down, hoping that will get them going again. We compare them with others, trying to find out who has the best model. We expect them to do things they weren't designed to do. We overload them, and we make them run harder so we get more work in less time. And when they aren't working the way we thought they should, we call and complain, threatening to return them if they don't live up to their guarantee. Some people keep their appliances shiny inside and out. They oil them, they clean them, they brag about them, they repair them when they do, in fact, break down. They buy the best and then determine to keep it until it dies. When they get noisy, they recognize that as a normal part of wear and tear, and then they fix the problem. When they're down, they rest and repair them and bring them back to normal function. Then they recommend them to others for their good years of service. Not very artistic way to describe an installation. <laughs> well, I don't think this notion of installation is completely off base. It does lack a bit and certainly misses the point that we know is true today, that this is a relationship, a covenant between a pastor and a people and an association and a group of churches that have covenanted together to share the gospel, the gospel of God's liberating love in Jesus Christ. And this installation is that act of covenant. It's a time of sealing those relationships, those promises, those dreams that you have with one another. Those of us who preach from the scriptures know that the Bible is filled with relationships. God wants us to be in relationship with God and also with one another. As we celebrate the beginning of a new pastorate here in DeKalb, it is good and right to recall in the words of separatist leader John Robinson, you knew the New England Congregationalists would quote John Robinson, that God has more light and truth to break forth from God's holy word. And today we echo that in the United Church of Christ by saying, yes, God is still speaking. God begins the world in which we live with creation. God speaks a word of creation, and the world and the created order is brought forth. As time goes on, God speaks through Abraham and Sarah to lead a chosen people. A new relationship with humanity was begun. And soon God's people were in bondage in Egypt. They cried out for deliverance, so God spoke through them through a rescuer. Moses, through whom they were freed and brought into the promised land, and God began again. And then, as scripture says, in the fullness of time, 
God sent the one to bring the good news of another new beginning, the one that offered salvation for all and the promise of justice and peace, even Jesus Christ. Finally, as the book of Revelation says, at the end of history, things will not really end after all. We find a new heaven and a new earth. No more tears, no more pain, no more death. I'm making everything new. Behold, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Never place a period where God has placed a comma over and over again in the midst of our separation, in the midst of our wandering, in the midst of the fear we find ourselves facing every single day these days. The God who speaks today begins with us again. We believe in the still speaking God, the God who never ceases loving and caring for humankind and the earth and who expects us to do the same. The God who constantly unfolds new messages of hope and salvation. It means that we worship God as alive and active in this world, calling out for justice and truth meeting us in facing the challenges of our world and not throwing up our hands and saying, there is nothing we might do. Nothing could be further from the truth, my friends. If there is yet more light and truth to break forth from God's word, maybe we don't yet have the whole picture. If God is still speaking, maybe there is more we need to know. Maybe there's more we need to hear. It means we realize that we don't have all the answers, that we're still pilgrims, seeking and searching and living and learning together in this beloved community that we call the church. Because God is still speaking, we believe in God's continuing revelation. John and members of this church and members of the Prairie Association and other faith communities, let's take some risks in our life together. Because God is still speaking. You can change what you've always done. And you can be open to God's unfolding spirit because God's spirit still is speaking and unfolding now in our time. Because God is still speaking, you can admit that you've made some mistakes along the way and then dare to break the old rules that no longer apply. The United Church of Christ and its forebears have a record of extending God's extravagant love to all of God's children. That is a radical message for our time. You might not think that, but your neighbors need to hear that. They need to know that, that God loves them just as God has created them as good and holy and perfect in the sight of God. Our witness in these times of deep division is critical. It is life-giving. It is life-saving. And so as you seal the partnership this day, remember, you're not alone. Remember that we are partners and that we are connected one to the other. We are not independent, we are interdependent. And so we stand ready, John and DeKalb, to work with you all to make this world more just, more loving, more compassionate. 
May God bless this covenantal relationship between pastor and people, association, and Illinois conference for the days, the months, and yes, in fact, the years to come. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything that you do and everywhere you go. God is the one who will keep us on track. Amen. Good afternoon. As I look out, I know that I do not have to tell this group how important education is, how important staying informed is. Um, the offering is going to be for the Prairie Association Clergy Development Fund, and I'll let you read a little bit about that. But I have a little bit maybe different perspective than maybe some of you do. And that is that I was married to a seminarian. <laughs> and I know that God called John to this, but I was not always sure. There were many times when we were at Eden Seminary with our two little babies, and I kept thinking, OK, we got rent to pay, <laughs> let alone tuition. This is very important because I like, probably most of you like our ministers to be educated, right? And know what they're talking about? Although sometimes I wonder. <laughs> there were many times when I was worried about that and yet somehow God always provided. And like Kent said, this is our opportunity to be in covenant with each other. This is our opportunity to be those saving angels that were for me I want to say 10 years ago, but we're more like 40 years ago. <laughs> so I'm inviting you to be generous as you consider this offering, because I can assure you that there are lots of people who need that, and that it's not just the people of DeKalb UCC, or the Illinois Conference, or the National Conference, or all the denominations that are here. This is our opportunity to be in covenant with each other, so be generous.
How many of you just said, wow, under your breath? Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. I'm going to uh, pull an audible. This isn't in your bulletin. And I've got seven people I'd like to invite forward. And they are Lisa Gorschels, Courtney, Amy Overton, Ginny Omarad, Jonna Jennings is not able to be with us today, Carol Guinness, you've got the longest walk, Carol, get moving, <laughs> Jerry Gorschels, Amy Overton, I already got you, and Linda Tillis. When you started the journey, of serving our church as the pastoral search committee. I think you thought you'd be done in a month or two. <laughs> you worked diligently, faithfully. Our church promised you steak dinners. <laughs> this is we're delivering today, it's downstairs. <laughs> you have your own table. Okay, but members of First Congregational Church and the Prairie Association and all our distinguished guests today, please join me with thunderous applause for our service. <laughs> to know who we're celebrating with today. So would the members and friends, all of you who call First Congregational United Church of Christ your spiritual home and faith family, will you please rise so we may see you, know who you are. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to introduce our, uh, some of our, the folks you've already, already been in contact with, but Courtney and Amy are our co-moderators and they're doing a terrific job. Mm -hmm. And our musicians, <clears throat> Travis and Courtney and Tom, we're so grateful for your gifts today. Our videographer, Colleen and, is that you, Lisa? No. Colleen. No. Thank you, thank you. Our fellowship team, which has worked really, really hard to put on a great reception, please come downstairs to the fellowship hall afterwards. There's an elevator just out this hallway here, and there's a lot of wonderful food and hot coffee. Amen. I want to welcome and introduce our guest participants, Lori Allen and Joe Mitchell, and Joe Gastiger, not Chad Abbott. <laughs> Our preacher, Kent Salati, Norm Williams, who you'll hear from later, and his wife, Linda, and Mindy Quellhurst and her husband, Jeff Davis, and we'll hear from you soon, too. I want to introduce the Prairie Association Minister Emeritus, and that's the Reverend Bob Meisner, and... fortunate we are to have you, Bob. I want to introduce the Prairie Association moderator, Reverend Hank Fairman. And I'd like the members of the Committee on Ministry of the Prairie Association to please stand, and I'm going to introduce you. This is a group that held Pastor John's toes to the fire. <laughs> to make sure that he was qualified to be installed. <laughs> Reverend Jennifer Amy Dressler, wave. Mr. Jim Barnes, our chairperson, Ted Engelsdorfer, Reverend Ted, Pastor Becky Irby, Pastor Alex Garncars, Mr. Jerry Gorschels, Reverend Eric Ogie, and our former chairperson who led the Inquisition, <laughs> Reverend Dave Bacon. <laughs> I 
now, I know that there are other prairie clergy who are too shy to come sit up with the other kids, so I'm going to have to call you out. I'm going to do that, and I hope I can see you all. Um, I'm going to start with Dwayne, Reverends Dwayne and Christina Hoffman, our retired pastors. Stand up. Um, Reverend Mary Gay McKinney. I know there's some others out there. I missed any prairie pastors. Okay. We have some guests from associations far, far away, and I'd like to introduce the Reverends Dan and Carly Sather. <laughs> Reverend Kim Whistler Vasco. <laughs> have I missed anybody else? Okay, now we've got some folks who have come from other prairie congregations. Mr. Fred Ashey is a former member of the Committee on Ministry, all the way from Pearl City today. And Steve Irby, where are you? Steve is from Second First in Rockford. And Sue Saunders is also a member at Second First. It's getting dark and I can't, I gotta make sure I got everybody, okay? We do, all right. Welcome, welcome, and welcome our ecumenical guests if you're hiding behind a UCC pastor, Bill Griesenauer, stand up. <laughs> Bill Griesenauer, <laughs> Federated Sycamore, retired. Uh, Brian Ide, I know you're here. Member in discernment, thank you. John Omarad, member in the sermon and bridge pastor at Big Rock. Okay, if, you're, if I haven't seen you by now, it's clock's ticking. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob Wang. Bob Wang is uh, a member at, he's a interim pastor in Crystal Lake. Rachel Kirk is uh, the associate pastor at St. John in Freeport. Um, <laughs> Reverend Tyler Spellius from the United Church of Byron. <laughs> Reverend Ralph Carr, retired pastor, member here. <laughs> Reverend Nancy Fraley, interim pastor at Hinckley. <laughs> we met Deborah Nettie earlier. Did I get you two? Okay. Seriously. <laughs> uh, David Sheridan is our pastor at Spring Creek in Rockford. Bob Saunders is retired and a member of Second First in Rockford. So we've met Alex. Okay, well, seriously, have I missed? Oh. And I'm. Um, my name's Kathy Laws, and I am the associate conference. Okay, I think we've got everybody. So I'm now going to invite our association moderator and um, the church's co-moderators and the members of the Committee on Ministry to come forward for the pastoral installation liturgy. Installations you've been to before, but I've normally oh, we do this with about three people, so having a baseball team up here is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on first? Oh, I guess that's me. Friends of the Prairie Association of the Illinois Conference of the United Church of Christ greets you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church on heaven and on earth. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. 
and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Let us look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy of his waiting, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. First Congregational United Church of Christ of DeKalb, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, has called the Reverend Dr. John Dorhauer as its pastor and teacher. We respectfully request that the Prairie Association install him in this ministry among us according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ. The Prairie Association has reviewed the request of the First Congregational United Church of Christ. We have prayerfully examined the Reverend Dr. John Dorhauer and we are pleased to install him as your pastor and teacher. Reverend Dr. John Dorhauer, servant of God, we invite you to come forward as a sign of your acceptance of the call to this office. Installation is the action of an association of the United Church of Christ in cooperation with a local church. Installation confirms and celebrates the covenantal relationship among the local church, its pastor and teacher, and the United Church of Christ. Installation is a sign that these covenantal partners are committed to share mutually in the mission of the United Church of Christ and of the ecumenical church. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul. We beg you, our sisters and brothers, to pay proper respect to those who work among you, who guide and instruct you in the Christian life. Treat them with the greatest respect and love because of the work they do. Be at peace among yourselves. We urge you, our brother, warn the idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, and be patient with all. See that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but at all times make it your aim to do good to one another and to all people. Be joyful always. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants of you in your life. In Jesus Christ, amen. Dear friends, First Congregational United Church of Christ has declared that, having gathered under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it has called the Reverend Dr. John Dorhauer to minister in his place as a pastor and teacher, and that it now receives him as appointed by God for this ministry. The First of the United Church of Christ has declared that he has met all the necessary conditions for installation to this office. Pastor John, seeing that you are called to ordain ministry by the grace of God and that First Congregational United Church of Christ has been led to call you as pastor and teacher, are you willing to enter into this covenant with its members who are one in Christ with us in the Prairie Association? I am willing. And I promise to serve this church faithfully, preaching and teaching the word of God, administering the sacraments, and fulfilling the pastoral office, according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ. Members of First Congregational United Church of Christ, will you please rise in body or in spirit to affirm, affirm your covenant with your pastor and teacher? We Members of the Prairie Association and our ecumenical guests, will you please rise in body or spirit 
to affirm your covenant with First Congregational United Church of Christ and its pastor and teacher. seated and let us pray almighty God you have called your servants to make promises before you now enable us to keep our vows that we may remain steadfast in faith and fruitful in every good work bless we pray your servant pastor John to whom the care of your people in this church is now committed Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him, on the people of First Congregational United Church of Christ, and on all the churches of the Prairie Association, that our mutual ministry may be served with faithfulness, diligence, and courage. Grant us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. Make our ministry a means of awakening the careless, strengthening the faithful, comforting the afflicted, building up your church, and converting sinners to you. Guard us against the snares of temptation that we may be kept pure in heart, fervent in spirit, and valiant against By your grace, keep us in your eternal home where with you and the Holy Spirit Christ reigns in glory, one God forever and ever. Amen. Here's the second audible of this afternoon. Mimi, will you please come forward? Over here, over here. You can bring John with you if you want. We notice that you have that waved out really well. Welcome Mimi Dorhauer, the First Congregational United Church of Christ of DeKalb, Illinois, the Prairie Association and the Illinois Conference. You are already involved and beloved. We extend to you our delight and our acknowledgement that you're an integral part, both up front and behind the scenes, you are an integral part of the pastoral team here. We don't take you or your own ministry for granted. Nor do we expect you to pass on recipes to John. <laughs> we should have a certificate of installation for pastors, partners, or spouses. That's not a bad idea. Right. <laughs> the UCC has not created that yet. So in its place, Here's your very own box of chocolates. <laughs> it's from the DeKalb Confectionery. And you can decide whether or not to share them. <laughs> We're so glad to have you here. Yep, yes, let's clap for you. John, come forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, and on behalf of the Prairie Association of the United Church of Christ, I declare you duly installed as pastor and teacher of First Congregational United Church of Christ in Cal, Illinois. Welcome home, John. be brief. First, a word of thanks to Travis. Mimi and I <laughs> Mimi and I walked down the aisle together to that beautiful prelude that you played. You have no way of knowing this, but that's what was playing when she walked down the aisle at our wedding. <laughs> and as you played that, I heard that, I started having this deep experience, this deep emotional experience, thinking, 
this feels like something really special. <laughs> and then it hit me. You don't know what you did, but that was quite a gift with the opening of the service. So thank you. And to the members of First Congregational, I used to say to congregations in times of transition that the Holy Spirit would be their greatest ally. And I want to thank you for trusting the movement of the Holy Spirit. Um, I've made a pledge a long time ago to go where the Spirit called me to go. And I have been in places called by the Holy Spirit that didn't excite me. <laughs> but from the moment I read your profile, I had already fallen in love with you and was excited about the possibility of being your pastor. That we together discern the movement of the Holy Spirit to have a moment like this is so special to me. I will do my best in the years that follows to serve you faithfully. But for now, I'm just so proud to be known as your pastor and so delighted that together we saw the movement of the Holy Spirit unfolding. So thank you for your faithfulness to that task. Members of First Congregation of the United Church of Christ, we've called the Reverend Dr. John Dohauer into a sacred covenant with you as your new pastor. You have invited him and his family to share in this faith community. He has come and declared before God and before you his willingness to serve you as minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm honored to present this charge for you to commit yourselves to this covenant. Be intentional of dusting off your spiritual welcome mat so that John and his family are made to feel that First Congregational is their home as much as it is your home. Greet them with the spirit of hospitality today and in all the days ahead. The United Church of Christ uses the phrase extravagant welcome. And the phrase I'd like to leave with you today is enduring welcome, the kind that will last the test of time. A preacher is a teacher, and John will pour himself into studying to prepare himself for worship on Sunday and every time you meet. Be an active listener not one that passively receives what's been prepared. During the week, between services, reach out to him with questions regarding a sermon or of your study of scripture or your opinion of the work of the church. Pastors want to know that they've made a difference. They yearn for feedback, even though they know they're going to get pushback. <laughs> Make time to have these conversations with John as a partner in ministry. A pastor and congregation together become a powerful force and share a spirit of grace that is precious. This will be invaluable to John on days when he, like any preacher, wonders if they have been heard. For as the pastor teaches the congregation and the congregation learns, the congregation also teaches, and the pastor learns. Over the years, together, be lifelong learners. In calling John, you have also placed upon his shoulders the priestly duty of bringing the sacraments to this church. Join him in making those moments sacred. Let every baptism, every Lord's Supper, every wedding, Every prayer for the sick and every funeral be special moments in your lives. Let them be rich with meaning and God's presence. The ministry of the care and compassion is not only John's to do. It is an opportunity and a calling as a congregation to minister to him, even as you join him in your ministry to one another. Give him time to be with his family, 
to be a husband, a father, and a friend. There are some professions that are easier to set boundaries than this one. <laughs> Help set the kind of boundaries that will allow John to be enriched in his own life and household. Lastly, every church wants to preserve its traditions and its legacy. However, be open to fresh ideas, new ways of being church, with as much energy and as much commitment. Allow John the freedom to share his vision of the church's mission. Let your ministry together be collegial in order that agreements and differing points of view are safely shared and honored. If we are going to be led in the, path, in the paths of righteousness for God's name's sake, we know, we're old enough to know, it's not always going to be a walk in the park. Doing the work of a partnered ministry, you will confide in John and he will confide in you. Those moments of trust are invaluable. And now, may God grant that loving and being loved, serving and being served, blessing and being blessed, we may be prepared while we dwell together on earth for the perfect fellowship in the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. On August 1985, I walked onto the campus of Eden Theological Seminary and the first two people I met were John and his two months old son, John Jacob, and then Mimi later. From that day forward, we became friends, classmates, colleagues, and confidants. We have listened and been there for each other throughout all life has thrown at us. I was sitting in the room in West Dorm when John got his first call to Mayview, Missouri. And I stand before you today to charge him in hopefully his last call, knowing his age <laughs> and mine, <laughs> at his last call, to authorized United Church of Christ ministry. And it is an honor and a privilege to charge you, John, in this call of your life at this local faith community. John, I, I know you well. And it has been a while since you have served a local church. <laughs> I want to remind you it is different than wider church ministry, as I should know since I have served local churches the entire time we have been ordained. I could tell all of you stories that would help you get to know John and Mimi better, but that's not going to happen because that's John and Mimi's job to tell you. John, tell them the stories. Let them know the John who has been called by God with all your gifts and graces. The John who loves the Cardinals. He gave this to me at my installation. He's not getting it back. John who loves the Cardinals and soccer and wears flip-flops and comfy clothes again. The John that stands up, speaks out, and shows up for God's unconditional love for all. And the John who loves his family, his grandchildren, and God. John, I want to remind you that we all need each other. You need your family. You need your friends. You need your colleagues in ministry to support each other in our common ministry, to be there to listen and to share together. Take time to be John. Share your gifts. Share the joys and the sorrows of life, the times of change and challenge. We are claimed and named by God. 
And as Isaiah says, do not fear, for I am with you. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. So John, I challenge you to remember God formed you. God called you. God redeemed you. God named you. God claimed you. God loves you. And you are never alone. God's blessings be upon you. So take your days off. Do your woodworking, writing, biking, golfing, <laughs> antique looking, and go cards. <laughs> share, yeah. share your education, your heart, your love of God, and all you say and do. And continue to live by the words of your favorite hymn. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. And know this, your voice will get you in good trouble. <laughs> when you use it to disrupt the status quo, when you raise it to disturb the false peace, get yourself in some good, necessary trouble, my friend. Blessings abound. Amen. You stand and join in singing, Be Thou My Vision. to remain standing for our benediction. Friends, as you go forth this day, may God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice and oppression and the exploitation of people so that you may work for justice and freedom and peace. And may God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them, that their pain might turn into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done.
bring justice and kindness to all our children and to the poor. Hear these words of Francis Franciscan benediction and let all the people say, Amen. Amen.